Today we are going to discover the brass family, which is the group of instruments that sits right behind the woodwind family in the orchestra. These instruments are made of metal and they all have a cup-shaped mouthpiece. Do you remember we talked about the vibration we need to create a sound? For the string family, we talked about making the string vibrate. And for the woodwind family, we talked about making the reed or reeds vibrate while blowing air into the instrument, with the exception of the flute. To play a brass instrument, we need to be able to buzz our lips. Try to do it with me. By making their lips vibrate as we just did and blowing air into their instrument through the mouthpiece, brass players create a sound. They can also change the pitch of the note just by using their mouth. They can do this by contracting and relaxing their lips as well as by changing the speed of the air coming through their mouth. Slower and warm air will produce lower notes and faster and cool air will produce higher notes. The very first brass instruments couldn't play many notes and the only way to change the notes was to use one's mouth. But later in the Romantic period, valves were added to brass instruments and that opened up a whole new range of sounds to the musicians and to composers. With valves, brass instruments could produce many more notes like any other instrument of the orchestra. Now you can understand why many composers at that time started to write music for brass instruments and why this family was added to the orchestra. Brass instruments brought a new kind of sound to the orchestra and composers loved writing music for them. Let's take a look at each instrument and hear some examples. The four main instruments in the brass family are the trumpet, the trombone, the French horn and the tuba. Let's talk first about the trumpet. This is the instrument that can play the highest pitches. The oldest instrument that looked like a trumpet was found in Egypt and it is about 3,500 years. So you can see this is a very old instrument. This instrument wasn't used to make music as we know it today. It was used first for ritual and ceremonial purposes and later for hunting or during war to send messages between the soldiers. The instrument you can see now is a natural trumpet and it was already used more than 400 years ago. This instrument has no valves. Let's listen how it sounds. kind of trumpet is the same one classical composers wrote for, since valves were added to the instrument in the beginning of the Romantic period. Do you remember what the natural trumpet looked like? Here is a picture of a trumpet with valves. Can you see the difference? With those three valves, playing the trumpet became easier, and composers could write many more melodies to express their feelings. Let's listen to the sound of this trumpet.
Did you like it? The trumpet can make a very bright sound, shiny, like the material it's made of. Did you notice the orchestra? There were only brass instruments in this orchestra. Our second instrument from the brass family is the trombone. The trombone has no valves, but it has a unique feature. It's called the slide. The trombone player moves the slide back and forth to change the length of the instrument. Making the instrument longer makes the pitch go lower, producing lower notes. Making it shorter makes the pitches or notes go higher. Let's listen to a trombone ensemble. Isn't it amazing to be able to play all those notes just by moving the slide? Our third instrument in the brass family is the French horn, and we are fortunate to have a very accomplished French horn player here with us today to teach us all about his instrument. His name is David Bird Merrow. Let's say hello to him. Hi, Misella, and hi, Harmony students. I'm super excited to be talking to you guys today about my favorite instrument, the French horn. Looks pretty cool, right? It's the most curvy of all of the brass instruments. Some people say it looks like a snail. I think they're probably right. Um, one of the coolest things about the French horn, actually, is that we have the biggest range, so we can play really low and really high. Listen to this. We cover five octaves. It's pretty cool, right? So that means we get to play up high with the trumpets and down low with the trombones and the tubas. Another thing that we can do, like all brass instruments, is play really soft, but then really loud. Listen to this. It's nice, it's like sweet and soft and lyrical. And we can also play powerful and loud. That was powerful, right? All right, well, you know, this is all stuff that maybe every other brass instrument can do. But one of the things that really sets the horn apart is that you might be no noticing that I have my hand in the bell. Well, there's a cool, there's a few things that I can do with my hand while I'm there. And I'm gonna turn around just to show you a little bit. So watch my hand as I hold the note. That's pretty interesting, right? We can control the pitch 
with just the shape of our hand. And when we close our hand totally, we get what's called stop torn, and that's a totally different sound. Listen to this. Sounds like a party favor or something, you know, like a kazoo or a noisemaker. Um, we can also put other things in our belt, like the other brass instruments. For example, I have another uh, mute that's uh, also called a stop mute. It imitates what I do with my hand, but it's a little bit more metallic sounding. <laughs> We have a wooden mute, makes things a little bit softer. It actually does what mute means, right? Mute means to make something softer. And this guy right here, which is the Wawa mute, which you'll see the trombones use a lot. So we get to play with all of these different things to have fun with our sound a little bit. So I'm so glad I was able to share the horn with you. Um, before I go, I'm going to play a short little song for you. It's a solo from a piece by a man named Felix Mendelssohn, and it's based on a play by William Shakespeare called Midsummer Night's Dream. And this is the Nocturne, and it's a big horn solo. Thank you guys so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your Harmony program and thank you Miss Ella and I hope to see you guys really soon. Thank you so much David. It was fascinating. Take care. I must tell you a secret. The French horn is my favorite instrument in the brass family. It has such a warm sound and there are so many beautiful pieces written for it. That's why I love it. We still have one last instrument to discover, the largest and lowest one, the tuba. Just like the other brass instruments, the sound is made by a lip vibration into a mouthpiece. This vibration is the buzz we did in the beginning of the lesson. This is the last instrument created in the brass family. Let's listen to the tuba playing as a soloist. Remember? The orchestra is playing the accompaniment, the tutti part, while the important part is played by the soloist.
beautiful sound. <laughs> 